Hello, welcome. In this video, we're looking at trigonometry, the graphs of trig functions. We're scrolling down to the period of a sinusoidal function from a graph. So we'll look at four examples here. And what we're really talking about is the symmetry of a sine function and a cosine function and so on and so forth. Um, in the first problem, for example, they give you a minimum point here and a maximum point. So first of all, let's be clear. A period is the distance from one maximum to the next maximum. That's one way to nicely define your period. That's our period right there. It's also the distance from one minimum to the next minimum, and so on and so forth. So here, um, they don't give us enough information to go from one max to the other. They give us a max and a min. And you might be thinking, wow, that would be really nice if this minimum point is exactly at the halfway point between those two maximums. And that's where some of the beautiful symmetry comes in to play. Guess what? Math is awesome. It is at that halfway point. We're not going to be given sine functions where that's not happening. Is it possible to bend a sine or cosine function in such a way that that's not true? I don't believe so, but maybe it is, but you won't see that here. In every sine function and cosine function we're looking at, this lower point is, is, is exactly halfway between these two maximum points. And that just means what we can do here is say, okay, this point, I, I blocked it off. This point is at negative 3.6, negative 1.2. This point is at negative 10.5. 4 and negative 9.8, we're concerned with that horizontal distance. So I'm looking at negative 3.6 minus negative 10.4. And yes, you can subtract in either order because what you're going to want to do is take the absolute value of that difference. And that will tell you how far apart these two points are. So in this case, that's 6.8 units. And that's half of our period, because this length and this length are equal. So we multiply 6.8 times 2, and we get our period is 13.8. What does that mean? Whatever units we have on the x-axis, it takes 13.8 of them to complete one cycle of your sine or cosine wave. Next problem, very similar. Here, we're given a midpoint, um, uh, we're given a minimum point at 6.2, 3.8. So that, that x position right there, we're gonna do something with that, 6.2. And this point is precisely crossing through the midline of the function. And that brings another element of the symmetry of sine and cosine graphs. If you have a, a point that's crossing your midline, right, on the graph, that point is exactly halfway between its corresponding minimum and maximum points. It's exactly halfway between it. So in terms of the period, then think about what that will mean. If the period goes from here to here, and we just saw in the last example, this point is the halfway point, we're now saying that the midpoint is half of that distance, left and right. So right, this distance here is equal to this distance, and it takes one, two, three, four of them to get all the way across, right? Because this is just half of the picture here. So whatever horizontal distance we're getting between, um, in our case, what are we given? We're given these two points, so we'll get this distance. Just take that distance and multiply it by four. One, two, three, four. That's the full period, the, the amount of units it takes for this wave to complete one cycle. So we do 6.2 minus this x position, 8.7, take the absolute value, and multiply that by 4. I'm going to do it all in one step right there, and we get 10. And that means our period is 10. It takes 10 units to complete a cycle. In the next one, here, we're given two points, and they're both crossing the midline. So this distance, think about what that's going to tell us. We know that this minimum point, there's a maximum point here, and some minimum point there, and another maximum point here. The full period is right here. 
right? This is what we're trying to find. So maybe pause the video, think about what can we do? Well, let's think about it. We have our halfway point here, okay? And these points cross our midline here at 7 fifths pi 8 and 3 fifths pi 8. So we look at this and maybe we recognize, well, again, all these little regions are equal. They're each one fourth of the total period. So if we can find this distance here, which is the distance between the two points we're given, that's two one fourths or one half of a full period. So again, we're in a situation where we subtract the x values in any order. We're taking the absolute value in the end, right? And then we take that and it's half of the period, so we double it. So here, let's just do this. We're subtracting fractions with equal denominators. 3 minus 7 is negative 4 over 5 pi's. But we're taking the absolute value, so it's not negative 4 fi fifths pi, it's 4 fifths pi. Right? Then we take it. I don't need the absolute value sign anymore, sorry. So it's 4 fifths pi. And then we multiply that by 2. So what do we get? We get. 8 pi over 5, or 8 fifths pi. Those are equivalent statements. And that is our period. These are both common ways of writing the period. OK, let's do one more. So again here, in this, we kind of return to the original problem. We have a max and a min. We subtract the x values. We're just in radians now. So 3 pi over 4 minus 1 pi over 4 or 1 fourth pi let me be consistent with that 1 fourth pi take the absolute value of that dis that distance um, of that difference excuse me and double it because we have half and this is half of a full period so that's just going to be 3 fourths minus 1 fourth is 2 fourths or a half pi over 2 and then we're multiplying that by 2 to get the full period and that's just pi so it's a nice way to finish that set. All right, hope that helped out.